Welcome to the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington for round number four of the four Parts Unlimited AMA Supercross Series. I'm Art Ekman along with David Bailey and Davey Coombs ready to bring you the action. We've had a truly unique beginning to the 1997. Three races, three different winners, each on a different brand. This has happened only one time before 1976 when the season started with a record four different riders on four different brands winning the first four races. DeCefano, Weiner, Ellis, and Smith. Tonight's opening qualifying heat, almost ready to go. The top four riders from each of the two qualifying heats advance to the main event, getting first choice at the gate selection. The rest of the field goes on to the semifinals, where the top five from each of the two semifinals advance to the main event. You have to get to the main to make the money, and there's only more two chances left. The last chance qualifier, the top two, will make out the 20-rider field. The others rack it up to experience. We're getting right to the action now in our first qualifying heat. You see Greg Albertine putting the goggles on. You don't like the put the goggles on too early, David Bailey, here in Seattle. Well, all the goggle companies do a great job of providing a no-fog lens, but still somehow it fogs up a little bit and it messes with your concentration to stare at that gate. Greg Albertine lined up just to the inside of the starter's box. Larry Ward, second in points. Greg Albertine, Ezra Lusk, Mike Loracco, Michael Craig, Steve Lampson, Kyle Lewis, Jimmy Button, Jeff Matasevich, Phil March, just to name a few, and the gate is down. It is Steve Lampson, number four, with Craig, number 15, on the inside. Let's see who comes out of the second turn. Larry Ward also in the mix. Michael Craig, number 11, is on the move. Ezra Lusk is battling with the Lampson for second. And Craig came out smelling like a rose there. He tried to anticipate the gate, charged into it, actually had to back up just as it was dropping, and he still got a great jump. He's able to work to the inside of Lampson. Michael Craig coming out of the European season. A very successful one, winning both events in Geneva. But then got the slow start with a 14th, a 6th, and an 8th so far in the year. Here is the battle between Ezra Lusk. Mike Craig making a mistake right there as he came out just before the whoop section. That allowed Lusk. Look at Lusk's timing through that whoop section, just like Doug Henry in practice. Awesome through the whoops. Lusk trying to make up after a disappointing performance in Phoenix when he was encouraged by a second place podium performance in round number two. Lusk has been so fast, a great ride in the opening round at LA, charging through the pack, almost got LaRocco on the last lap, then second behind his teammate. He was fast in Phoenix until he had a couple of problems there with bad luck and tangled with other riders, but back on track here. Michael Craig comes back to try to challenge us for Lusk. It's three Hondas behind the Yamaha. Track's still pretty fresh right now, Art, but you can see in the face of those jumps, the rut's already starting to develop. That's what got right through the same section. That's what uh, took its toll on Craig. Larry Ward making a move on Lampson. Can't quite get by for fourth place. Look at Lusk hop through the whoops like that. 15, Craig, 4, Lampson. Ward is number 6. There is our battle right there. The three Hondas. Team Honda and Honda of Troy. Number 4, Steve Lampson. Just behind this battle, Greg Albertine starting to catch up from behind. Uh-oh, Lampson tried to cut that corner a little too tight. Just a minor bobble. That lets Larry Ward get by. This track is so good to pass on. A little bobble, and you've got to change your placement. Well, especially when the talent is all so close. Everybody's right there. Craig still not letting Lusk get away. Look at those ruts. Ezra Lusk battles it out with Michael Craig. Who's going to win this battle? We'll be right back and to find out in just a moment. Opening qualifying heat for the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington. You see Ezra Lusk, Michael Craig, Larry Ward, Lampson, and Albertine. Only four of those five riders will be advancing to the main out of qualifying heat number one. There is our leader, number 11, Ezra Lusk. Well, everyone's so evenly matched, too, that top three really staying close to each other. There you see second third just coming into the corner but look at Lusk's timing for this loop section he only hops through there about four times and that's it and the local favorite Larry Ward who won his only supercross race of his career in America right here in the Seattle Kingdom takes over second that cruising through the pits a little earlier talking to some people they were all saying Larry Ward can get a good start tonight with a third a fifth and a fourth so far in the series he's got a lot of confidence and 
is the only time he's ever won a Supercross in the U.S. here before. It's Ward, Craig, and then Steve Lampson. Looks like that tandem will send Greg Albertine to the semifinals. Craig's been fast, but he's one of those types of guys that can make a mistake here and there. If Lampson stays close enough, may be able to make that pass. All three of these guys very close. We've seen a lot of difference in the whoops every lap. One mistake through there. There goes Lampson. Here comes Lampson, number four, to the outside. Oh, bar to bar. Michael Craig's not giving him any space. Lampson looks like he's grabbing for the throttle. He makes the pass to the inside off the rocking chair. Pretty slick as he jumped up over the finish line jump rather than jump all the way over. I don't think he has enough room anyway, but he just landed on the top, scrubbed off some speed, made sure he could stay to the inside. Worked perfect. That's what's going to be fascinating about the main event tonight, David Bailey, is how different these riders will ride the different sections when they're pressed, when they need to get some room. Well, you can see right there the, the mistakes. I mean, it, these are the best riders in the world, and they're making a ton of mistakes out there. It's just because the conditions are so difficult. Mike Craig casing it again. It's like riding on a sponge. I talked to Lampton. I go, like, do you even need the brakes out there? He's like, well, not really. Maybe on the start. That's about it. The, just, the ground just soaks up all your speed. Steve Lampson trying to uphold the Team Honda flag. Has yet to win this year. He'd love to take a victory home from Seattle. Lampson's still got a little ways to go to catch Larry Ward. Lampson a disappointing 12th in the first round, a 10th in the second round, a 9th in Phoenix the third round. Lusk still out front looking smooth, but Larry Ward's actually starting to close in a little bit. It's the later stage of the races, and I wouldn't expect Lusk to ride as hard as he can all the way to the finish, but on this type of track, one mistake could cost you that much time right there that he's got on Larry Ward. So he's need, need to keep pushing. Also, they got lappers in the way. Won't let him take the line he wants. Ezra Lusk in his best performance of the year was round number two when he won his heat there, took the whole shot in the race, and took second. Here's a battle between LaRocco and his teammate Albertine. White flag lap. Final lap is underway. These two riders, though, have a lot of space to make up if they hope to qualify. Only the top four riders are going in this one. Unless one of the guys in front of them goes down, looks like they're both gonna go to the semi and continue this battle. Ezra Lusk is our leader. He's held it from the very start. You see how close Larry Ward is now. Larry Ward is getting his strength back after that leg injury before the season started. And he's looking very strong. Came up a little bit short there. You know, I think Larry did well in the early part of the season because he came in without a lot of expectation of pressure. This difficult attract, David Bailey, they're going to have to look out for difficulties with lappers in front of them. Ezra Lusk takes the heat race with Larry Ward a close second place. Lampson in third. And Michael Craig will be the final qualifier in fourth. We'll be here. Top four. We'll get their choice of early gates while Albertine, Larocco, Button, Lawrence, Lewis, and Jeff Matasevich are going to give us some good semifinal action, David. All the semifinals this year have looked like the heat races. So much talent not making the cut. Ruts separate uh, the men from the boys here in Seattle, but David, uh, this is a whole new design this year. Well, I'm really impressed with the track design. I think they did an excellent job of creating some new obstacles. From the Suzuki track map, you can see it's a long start, but a pretty small first corner. And as they make that first left, and they don't make the first left, they actually make the next one. So that becomes a sweeper. The whoop section over to the right of your screen has been giving the riders fits because of the ruts. And then the finish line jump is one of the biggest ones we've seen so far, probably the biggest one ever. It's gonna be exciting. And because of the ruts and the new layout, probably the best chance to pass out there I've seen so far this season. Last week's winner giving us a wink, Jeff Emme. Along with Jeremy McGrath, the defending champion, Doug Henry, our points leader, and winner of round two is in this qualifying heat. John Dowd, a 125 Eastern winner. Here's Doug Henry, of course. Boy, what a start on the season that young man has. Wyatt Seals, the mechanic for Jeremy McGrath, as Jeremy puts on the goggles, ready to go. Also, Damon Huffman, Damon Bradshaw, Mike Kudrowski, Michael Chairman. 
Chamberlain and Brian Swank along with the 125 Eastern rider David Pingree also in this lineup. So we've got a lot of them running for the chance at the big bucks here in the second qualifying heat at the Kingdome in Seattle. A great crowd here in the Kingdome, David. It's good to see. They're great fans here in the Pacific Northwest. And they're pretty much rooting for uh, Larry Ward. Yeah. As to, I mean, what's that first heat race? Okay, they're revving up and they're off. Oh, what a scramble. Jeremy McGrath pulls out with Henry, number 20. It's between the two, and Jeff Emick crunches in. Jeff Emick takes over the lead. Jeff Emick with a tremendous burst of speed. Well, that was amazing. It looked like Jeremy had the whole shot for sure. Then Henry got around him on the outside, motored his way, and then Jeremy cut him off. And here comes Emick out of nowhere. Top Remember the guys. top four of a qualify out of this heat now as Emig and Henry and McGrath. Then it's number 13, Brian Swing. This is exciting because you got last week's winner, Emig, who's starting to find his rhythm again. And Henry and McGrath, if you cruise the pits after practice today, everyone seems to be thinking that tonight it's either going to be McGrath or Henry by the way things looked out there so far today. Jeremy McGrath looking for, of course, his first victory on the season after four consecutive Supercross championships. Got started late in the season with the change to a Suzuki bike. Every week, the settings on this bike have been different, David Baylor. Uh, they're getting better and better, though. And you imagine what it's like to try to do all the things that Jeremy's had to do, the commercials, the expectation, all the pressure, not even knowing what gear he was going to wear until the last minute. And then try to dial in the bike with all the rain. I think he's done a marvelous job under the circumstances. Well, he says they've come light years with this bike in the last week. He's had a chance to work out eight to ten times. Henry now giving some excitement to Emmy. You see Emmy the difference trying to hold on. on. Yeah, they got a difference in lines with a little mistake by Emmy. And he's taking the line I think that Henry wants to take. Henry's getting through that whoop section a little earlier, just like Lusk was in Heat 1, just bouncing through there about four times, and that's it. Jeff Emig and Doug Henry starting to pull away a little bit from uh, Jeremy McGrath as Mike Kudrowski has moved in to the final qualifying spot, number 100. But right now, our cameras are focused on the two leaders. Look at that. Jeff Emig. Oh, what a jump by Henry. Henry jumped all the way over that little triple there. It's not even really meant to be one. Henry makes it into one. Henry was pretty inventive in practice, experimenting with a lot of different lines. I think we're going to see a lot of that now that he can't. He's not following Emig. He's got to do something different. He practiced that earlier. Here comes Henry to the outside. Emig gets hung up on the hay bale. Here comes McGrath, but Emig gets started in time. Emig in second place with a close Jeremy McGrath on his tail. But Doug Henry now has got some breathing room. Uh, this is just an indication of what we're going to see all night. The soil just makes the pros not look quite like pros at times. These guys are going to make more and more mistakes as the track starts to rot up and deteriorate. Henry says it was a dream to be where he is right now. Number one in the points, number 20 on the bike. There he goes over that triple again, almost goes off the racetrack. He's got it into control. Okay, more outstanding qualifying action coming up. Can Henry hold on? Going back out there and trying to do it. Big line, big jump there by Emick. Made up some time on Jeremy. If you don't get stuck in a rut, you can get through some of these sections pretty quick, jumping, making triples out of stuff. But Here's Mike Kudrowski. He's won here in Seattle before. On his return after retirement, he says, hey, all this great depth of talent, why did they choose it when I came back uh, after retirement? <laughs> well, it's the best, closest racing I've seen in years. You know, I've talked to people in the past three or four years saying, well, it's fairly top-heavy. There's not that much talent, not like five or six guys like there used to be, and now we're back to that. And we've seen now that you're in danger three... of not making the main event. Exactly. Now we're seeing it. Yeah, the first three rounds, three different winners, the points close. Henry is a year away in first place. Emmy McGrath, Kudrowski, Bradshaw, and Hughes. But it's only the top four that advance directly to the main event. Get a little extra race and get good gate choices. That's right, and Kudrowski just got over that big triple there, starting to pull up on McGrath. Bradshaw still within striking distance, but unable to put any pressure on Kudrowski. This is the best I've seen him ride so far. He's especially, gotten better each week. Especially out of the heat race. McGrath holding on, and of course Bradshaw hoping if somebody goes down in front of him. 
been a while since I've seen Petrowski put pressure on Jeremy. And Emig is starting to pull a little bit closer to Doug Henry, our leader, as McGrath holds Petrowski off. McGrath number one. Boy, have the Suzuki pits changed? There must have been 400 autograph seekers around the Suzuki Semi in the pit area here in Seattle. And I wanted to go over and talk with Jeremy and Albertine and Rock a little bit and see what they thought of the track. I couldn't even get close. Bradshaw, a little bobble there. He's in fifth place. He'll go to the semifinal if he can't pick up one more spot. Well, our qualifying racing has been so outstanding. White flag on the final lap. Doug Henry over the finish line jump. Just has one more circle on the circuit. Pretty amazing last week going down to the first corner along with, with Lampson and uh, a couple other riders. Ryan Hughes going down, but out of all those guys, Henry got up and finished sixth preserved his points lead. That was pretty amazing. It was amazing because he certainly was the fastest bike on the track toward the end to pick up so many places. He just never gives up. You see the ruts giving everyone a lot of trouble. Here's a section Henry's coming into where he's been making up a lot of time. He rolls the first jump. He wasn't able to do it that time, but he's been jumping over that whole cavity. I think that lap rider was in his way, but he moves out of the way right there. I brought up the subject of the depth of talent to Henry, and Henry just told me, he says, you cannot go into the race thinking that you're not above everybody else. Well, that's, he's proven it right here. He's obviously very confident. The checkers for Henry. And what a way to start the evening in Seattle for the young man who many thought would never race again. Doug Henry, who started the season so well, the points leader, will be back to hear his words of wisdom right after this. In the Supercross action of 1997, Doug Henry looks like he doesn't want to give an inch. Winning uh, the Suzuki uh, Supercross uh, heat number two highlights here. Henry, Emig, McGrath, and Kodrowski going directly to the main event. Let's go down to Davey Coombs. Okay, thanks, people. We're down here with Doug Henry. Doug, you and your teammate at Yamaha, that's the second time this year you beat you in your heat race, and the last time was in Los Angeles, and you guys went first and second. Is that going to happen tonight? I really hope so. You know, Ezra's been riding good. The whole team's really been riding good. And I I just hope that uh, you know we can go out and do the same thing. Right, you got the biggest smile on your face all the time, but I don't understand one thing. How did this happen? I mean, you've come out of nowhere this year. Oh come on! What do you know? I've been doing pretty good. I guess it's just I trained hard in the off season. I went over to Japan. I did pretty good. I just took that momentum and brought it into uh, you know into the season. I think I, I'm definitely more ready than anybody else this year. All right. Well, congratulations, Doug. Thanks again. Boy, he's put it all behind him, haven't he, Dusty David? I mean, he's just looking forward all the way. Semi-final action can get pretty hairy as more riders try to make tonight's field. The action continues from the Kingdom in Seattle. One nine hundred for can to fix the track as the race goes. They're going on and on in between every heat, every intermission, doing the best they can. Some of the ruts, as you can see, are pretty bad, but they're doing a good job of keeping up with them. We'll see how the ruts form before the main event. Thanks. Better get off the track, Davey. Here they come. Five. Albertine, number eight. Albertine, number 16 is Lewis. And a pile up in that first out. turn. Ty Lance Birdwell, who qualified last Kitty week in Phoenix, out. number 89. And look who's out in front, KTM the four-stroke machine. Yes, he that's now on the KTM four-stroke. Albertine moves around him pretty quick, but the crowd was loving seeing that four-stroke. Isn't that the amazing? Bone they love that deep the sound being so unusual. And really, their the only purpose, this will be their last race of the Supercross season, Supercross season Supercross probably. Riding. They just wanted and to go out there and try to qualify for a race. But out in front, Greg Albertine, who's won two semis already this year. Just through that section right there, his teammate, Michael Rocco, just moved around three guys and in the second place. Smell went from first to fifth real quick. They're getting that bike dialed in better and better each week, though. We've got yellow bikes running one, two, and three behind Okay, so it's slow. Morocco, and then Lance Mayo, or Albertine, Morocco, KTM. Lewis, and then Jeff Matasevich, who'll be heading for Japan in March to start testing for his series, and then Schnell. The crowd loves this four-stroke. Every time he goes for the triple, they Albertine all roar. in the air, the Dunlop leader. Well, Schnell is in a qualifying leader. position right Sunday now from the number eight. in fifth the spot Suzuki because is way behind airborne up over the in the uh, sixth position. Up. Is Billy Binkley. See, LaRocco jumped up all the way over that triple, pulled Already away from Lewis a little bit right there. Front of the start line area. 
Albertine and Morocco. Parts Unlimited turn over the Our leaders from Team Suzuki. Flag not out yet, Both you these guys suffering to go. You know the so so starts in the heat race. Albertine. Forced them to have to ride Morocco, the semi. It's not such a bad thing. Riders have won the semis before. In fact, Albertine in the first race had to go to the semi. Still came back and won the main event. In some cases, it's good. You get a better look at the track. Maybe able to make some bike setups. And for a lot of guys, arm pump's been a problem here. And one more chance to go out there and shake it out might do you some good in the main event. Of course, the big KX machinery. Lewis is giving Mike Morocco fits. He keeps catching him on this side of the track. All right, but watch what Morocco does as they come out of this corner. Morocco hops over this. Look at that. He goes all the way up over that plateau. Lewis cases it. Morocco opens up that gap again. Morocco with a fourth and fifth, sandwiching a fifth deep in round two. Holding down those foot in practice machine. yesterday, got his bell run pretty hard, right. landing on his head. Morocco, of course, the American in fact, right in this section right here is where it happened. Turns up the wick before the finish line jump. Riders having a tough feet. time even in the corners. A lot of ruts developing, not really any good firms, just ruts. You see them all right there as they come out of the corner. It takes incredible balance. The timing element is really gone from this racetrack. Now it requires just balance. Trying to pick the right rod or just wheelie over them all if you can. Albertine, LaRocco, Lewis, Matasevich, and then Lance Smale from Federal Ray, Washington. Could this become the first four stroke to qualify for a U.S. Supercross final main event? Ray's riding right now. It's like he very well could. It's been getting better and better every week, and it's just amazing to see a four stroke indoors with Supercross, especially a track this technical, able to perhaps make the show. Outdoors, not that much of a surprise. Okay, the race to the go. finish we'll in semifinal to number one. When we return. Over here on the western. David Bailey, Davey Coombs. In Seattle, we have eight riders that have already qualified for the main. Five more will qualify out of semifinal number one. The team chaparral. Greg Albertine, number eight is our leader catching up with the lappers already there you see second and third mike Morocco very smooth through the whoops kyle lewis having a little bit more problem it's jeff Matasevich in fourth matt snail albert in Morocco. fifth the white flag kyle lap lewis. one more lap to go to qualify for the main event uh -oh. albertine's just been Lance looking better and better every week well, white talked to him during the out. week and he said uh the i told him I said you know you look different out there Jimmy you feel Martin. different we got a battle for the final qualifying position we're on. Lance Mail right now, but Jimmy Button is on the move. Number 18, Button is riding with broken cartilage between his ribs. What a gutsy performance by Button and Team Chaparral. Tried out, jumped the four stroke that time, but Smale is holding on. Oh, this crowd is going crazy for a semifinal race. Look out, here comes Button. That might do it right there. Smale was unable to go for the triple. Top break for Lance Smale. Good move from Button. There he gets all the way over that triple. That's probably going to consolidate this transfer spot. Albertine getting better and better every week. I talked to him. He said he was just more confident. Checkered flag for Albertine. Albertine, of course, after winning the semifinal round in Los Angeles in round number one, went on to win his first American Supercross. And what an effort by Jimmy Button, who is in pain. Four hungry Supercross riders vie for a semifinal. semifinal round. And we have been so lucky this year that all the qualifying rounds through three previous rounds and here tonight have been exciting, exciting All events. Right, folks, the next heat. It's been fantastic. Two, coming up for the Everything that's uh, this season so far, all the races have been so close, all the different winners. Uh, you go around the pits, I've mentioned this already this season, and ask somebody who the thing's going to win, and it's really been a toss-up, not like last year, where everyone just goes, well, McGrath, then Emig. It's really changed. I had a lot of more suspense back to this. Semi-final number two, getting ready to go. Six laps. Damon Bradshaw, winner here in 1992. Ryan Hughes, hungry for his first Supercross victory. Thinks he's got things back together. There's Ryan, number nine. Ryan Swank, injured last week, did not perform, but he's in there trying to fight his way to the main event. Damon Huffman. Oh, what a great battle he here had in Seattle against Jeremy McGrath. And, of course, you see Lance Mayo. The last couple of laps hung it up, and Jeremy went on the win. Yeah. We're off. Semi-final number two. Oh, what a pack going into that first turn. That's down number 14 on the inside. Number 17, though, out in front. 
number 17, Damon Huffman. Kingry is in second, number 57. He's a 125 Eastern rider, just getting some experience on the 250s. Here comes Dowd, making a move with Hughes for third. My memory serves me correctly. It's been a little while since Dave Huffman Pingree got a hole shot. Some serious talent now. Got a the clear track ahead of him, but he's got There's Ryan Hughes and Pingree right, right up, breathing down his neck. Machines all running together. Huffman, Pingree. Hughes, Hughes around the outside. Seven. Trying to find a way around Pingree. Hughes like getting on the podium will be in last week's race in Phoenix. Oh, Here comes Huffman. Says, hey, I started the season off with Last upset stomach, weakened condition, couldn't get my green. bike to run right. They green was just too soft. Here green comes green Hughes in front of Pingree. Can Pingree hold on to the inside? No, Hughes has the edge. And Dowd will be the next. We'll have the next Huffman, assault Hughes, on Pingree oh, with Bradshaw coming up. What a battle. Top five will go to the main event. Right now, it's Huffman pulling away. Ryan Hughes in second. He might Dowd catch up. Dowd, Pingree, and Bradshaw. Number 13 is Swing. All these top five riders starting to pull away a little bit now from Swing. Bradshaw putting the pressure on Pingree now. Pingree with that inside line. A lap before, he almost fell against the hay bale, just like we saw Emick do in the qualifier. Pingree coming back from a devastating injury of an ACL in one leg and pulled tendons in the other. A broken leg in the other, I should say. There's Dowd, number 14, a 125 Eastern rider getting more experience. Bradshaw putting the move on Pingree with uh, Lawrence just waiting in, uh, I should say Swink, just waiting behind them. Swink staying close. It looks like he lost a little bit of time the lap before. There you see right behind Bradshaw. 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 What a move on Pingree. Made it in the same place. Dowd did. Sometimes it's not a bad idea. Look up there, try to learn as much as you can from the riders in front of you, how they're making the pass. Make a note of that for the main event. Good to see Bradshaw with fire in his eyes again this year, having fun racing with Manchester Honda. On the number 10 machine. He'd like to get up there. He wants to I don't think we've seen down. Bradshaw's potential, though. He's had some bad problems. Last week, going down to the first corner, having to come from last. Had to go to the LCQ in round number two and uh, finish 16th in the main event. So he's not where he would like to be points-wise, but he's looking for a win, I'm telling you. It's really refreshing, too, to see that the luck he's had. He's still smiling and still really confident and optimistic about the rest of the season. Brian Swank. Is making a Let's move on Pingree. 1995. One, two, Swank five. makes the pass on Pingree. That's all she wrote. So if he holds that position, he'll be going to the main event. To the semi and then Great to timing the through the loop section that time by Swank. You see, he's pretty close still to Bradshaw and down. Last lap, white flag lap for number 17. Huffman just starting to pull away. Hughes made that mistake. Getting in a battle with Dow. It allowed Huffman to get out there and open up the gap just a little David bit. Huffman, Ryan Hughes, well, everybody was talking Henry in the pits prior, John but this is uh, a good racetrack for Damon Huffman. He is so tall, he takes those runs beautifully. Certainly was to his benefit last year. He rode great. He's so fast in the loop section. The loops are a little different, however, though, this year. There you see Hughes in second place. After the third place finish in Phoenix last weekend, Damon Huffman. Skipping Ladies through the hoops. Take winner. a look at the different styles now as they come through the hoops. Hughes, the parts Dowd, Bradshaw. And Swink up over the parts is in line as flag. taking Huffman. the checkered flag as David Huffman. Hughes will take a second. Dowd and, and a Bradshaw big accomplishment not only for a Huffman, a Hughes, a Dowd, and Bradshaw, but also I think Brian Swink deserves a big pat on the back coming back from injury. We'll be back. To hear from David Huffman, as well as take a look at the official results after this. Short cut on that corner, and is anxious to move into third place right now. He's past three riders, number 38. Nathan Ramsey out in front. See him shaking it off. So these guys shake their head. I don't know what they're doing. There's Wyndham. Look at him just carved through the pack. He just passed Ron Carla. That's 112. In sixth place, Sal moves into fifth as they go over the finish line jump. One lap completed. And our leader out in front is Nathan Ramsey with Pedro Gonzalez right behind him. And number 32, Casey Johnson is on the move. He just boxed out Kevin Wyndham right there. Ron Carla's back around. Ron Carla not letting Wyndham get through the turn. 
Wyndham made the pass, run, then he made a mistake over the finish line jump. All those guys got him right back, so they're not letting him have it his way as I. Oh, this is a great start for Nathan Ramsey, as look at the battle pursuing behind with Kevin Wyndham and Craig Decker, number 141. Craig Decker, a pro circuit. Wyndham takes that short turn once again. Very effective against Casey Johnson. Moves ahead of Casey now, as we see number 38 bouncing over those whoops, Nathan Ramsey. Here comes Wyndham. Look out. He's taking on Perovio, number 81. Finally gotten around Casey Johnson. See if he can make it stick. Casey to the inside again. This is where he boxed him out the last time. This time he left the door open. There goes Wyndham. Uh, great move by Wyndham. Now he's taking on the next rider, Perolio. And Wyndham is in good position now to challenge the leaders. Casey Johnson had a chance to get back in there on the inside again. Now, oh, Wyndham's off the track. Oh, Wyndham suffering a bad start in Los Angeles. And now he gets cut from behind. Looks like he's going to be okay, but just as he was re-entering the track, he thought he had enough gap. Oh, let's right. take another look at this one. Number 586, Christopher Wheeler from El Cajon, California, gets in from behind. Watch Wyndham, he even looks. I, didn't, I don't think he thought he was going to move out that far into the racetrack. Would have been smart right there. Just wait for a second. Now he's got so far to go, I don't think he's going to win it. Out in front, number 38, Nathan Ramsey. And for Ramsey, he's got a very good lead. Boy, everyone, including myself, thought Wyndham was such a heavy favorite here tonight to win this thing, even with a bad start. But Stefan Roncata who's only racing for the money. He's not racing for points, being a 125 Eastern rider, as you see, is in second place. Pedro Gonzalez in third with Craig Decker, now moving into fourth. There's Ron Cotta. As we see Ron Cotta going through the ropes, let's go down to Davey Combs and uh, check in with him uh, with uh, De uh, Kevin Windham's mechanic. Hey, okay, thanks, Art. Allie, you guys gonna hit the panic button. What are you gonna do? I just got to stay relaxed. He's, he's starting to catch up now. We got another 11 laps. We just got to get as many points as we can. Did that surprise you, Kevin, falling this early in the race for the second time this year? Yeah, it's just so many ruts out there, and uh, I don't know what happened. I didn't see it. I'll let you get back to work. We had we had a much better view than uh, the Alley Jarman because uh, he's down low. He couldn't see on the other end of the track. Kevin Wyndham trying to fight his way back into it. I think he may have bent the handlebars, too, when he went down that time. He went down hard. Nathan Ramsey, number 38, was just looking for a couple of podiums this year. He has an eight in Los Angeles. Made the podium in Los Angeles for round two with a third-place finish. And picked off an eighth after starting 18th in Phoenix. There's a lot of green coming through the boob section right there. Ramsey, Mercada, Gonzalez, Decker, and Johnson. Decker putting in a good ride. He's on the podium if he can stay there. I don't think he's going to be happy with that. You know, with the new 125 ruling, David Bailey, about other division non-top 10 riders being able to go to the other division and practice, this has been a great advantage for Stefan Rancada. He's just getting more and more comfortable. Ramsey almost coming up a little short right there. Pull the front up way up high just to make sure he got over that third jump. Well, he's one of the few 125ers uh, running with a power jet carburetor. As Ramsey has all kinds of trouble coming through the whoops, Roncada picks up the form. We'll be right back to see if Roncada can catch Ramsey after this. Here it is, the no-holds-barred world of Miller 97. More close calls, more true stories, more incredible footage. Exclusively here, not sold in store. See Los Angeles is second in Phoenix. Let's go down to Davy Coombs once again. Okay, thanks, Art. I'm down here with John Bundy. You've got a very happy guy right now, but that French kid's coming. What are you going to tell Nathan? Ah, uh, just stay smooth and ride his own race, you know, and uh, maybe things will work out our way. Okay, thanks, John. John Mitchell, better known as Bundy. Got a little of that accent. 
<laughs> Maybe it's from being around Ramsey too long. <laughs> Stefan Roncada, though, really showing some top form. The number 112 is starting to make a challenge, David. Roncada again, jumping the triple. Ramsey not able to do it. Remember, as this track gets more and more worn out through the main event, those ruts get deeper, and apparently Ramsey's not comfortable with jumping that triple in the ruts. Ron Cotta is. That could be the difference in the next few laps. Watching Ron Cotta on the shorter, more technical tracks in Paris, he had quite a few problems staying upright, but was always up there banging with Villeman. But Ron Cotta seems to like the American tracks better. It appears so, and he's got a great shot at winning this main event. He's got a huge gap back to third place now, so he can relax a little bit and just bide his time and look for the right place to make the pass. He told me last week he was just so excited to be up there with Wyndham. A little mistake by Ramsey. Mistakes yes. like that are going to cost him. That's going to give the confidence to Ron Cotta. Especially in a 15-lap race where you can certainly get tired quickly. Craig Decker is making a move on Pedro Gonzalez for third. This time, both these guys went for the triple. I think Ramsey knew that if he couldn't go for it, that just might be it. Ron Cotta's close enough. Yeah, we've got a good battle for first and second and a good battle for third and fourth. Ron Cotta was just, as I said, so excited to be up there looking at Wyndham for so long. He actually had a few opportunities to pass him last week in Phoenix. Finally, his arms started to pump up. He just was so excited and so nervous. He just had to back off and play it smart, which had to build his confidence, and the only other step up the ladder would be a first place. It looks like he's got a great opportunity. As we take a look at our leader, Decker has moved into third. Ramsey starting to pull open a little bit more lead this, this lap. He's able to get over the triples. There was a couple laps there where we started making mistakes. I thought Ron Cotter was going to get him, but he's responded to the challenge. Oh! Down goes Ramsey! And Ron Cotter runs right over him. That gives Decker a great opportunity in third. Here comes uh, Decker, not quite yet. He was quite a ways off, about 10 seconds behind. There goes Decker by both of them. Decker, along with Villeman, number 125. And Ramsey just getting up 38. A tough break for Ron Cotter, who didn't have time to react. Let's take another look, David. Well, you can see right here by his body positioning, got a little cross rutted, didn't have enough speed. He went. He went down hard, did a complete flip with a huge impact. Ron Cotta was already in the air, had nowhere to go, but right into the front of his motorcycle. It took him a long time to get up. You can see the ruts taking their toll right there. Decker, another mistake. Oh, what a battle now. Villeman is in the lead. This could be his first American win. Villeman, this was to be his last Supercross race before returning for training in Europe to get started on the GP circuit. If he wins this, I'll bet you a dollar or more he's coming back for the next round. Villeman, Gonzalez, Johnson, Decker, and Ramsey is our new order. I'll take that dollar bet. Eric Vallejo. Kawasaki of Mexico, the backup rider with Pedro Gonzalez, has gone off the track as you see him there. The track builders have done all they can do, putting cement in the face of these jumps, cement powder, letting that sit overnight, steamrolling it, but the face of these jumps are still getting rutted. you got to wonder what this track's going to be like for the 250s coming up next. Villeman, like Rancada, really likes racing in America. Likes the American scene. He was to originally come over with Team Chaparral, but then signed a deal with FMF. Got a pretty good lead now. He's starting to look around a little bit. Villeman with a fifth place in the first round, a second place in Los Angeles for round two, and then slipped big time, getting an awful start in 15th in Phoenix, and finally ending up in 13th place. But he's got a shot at his first American win in Supercross. Behind him is a three-way Kawasaki battle. Gonzalez got the upper hand right now. Still has the best timing. It's just whoever makes the least mistakes here tonight. Roncada has pulled off. And look at the battle in the whoops right now. Pedro Gonzalez, number 35. What a big boost of confidence a podium would be here tonight for Pedro. Number 32, though, is Casey Johnson. Casey Johnson, Pedro Gonzalez, and then we've got another Kawasaki cutting in front. Casey Johnson just with a little better line up to the finish line jump. 
J.C. Johnson with a third in the opener. After winning his heat, a 7th and 11th on the season, he'd love to pick up a better spot. We'll be back with more exciting 125 main event action as you see our leaders there. Cattle. Art Ekman along with David Bailey up top, David Coombs down below. As we take a look at David Villeman. All the way, the pit board says. He can do it. Ramsey went down, number 38, the second time he's hit the dirt. Oh, he's got to be feeling the effects of that impact. He went down so hard, right into the face of that jump, bent the bike, and a huge disappointment. Looked like he had it. Villeman who is fourth in points, has a good shot really at the title should he pick off a win here tonight. Decker has just gone off the track behind the leader. And so we've got another change of order. Oh, this track has proved treacherous on the 125s. That's going to get even worse for the 250s, these ruts. 32 is impossible. Casey Johnson. There's Villeman number 125. What a race he's put together. At this point in the race, the way the ruts are, you can see Villeman riding all the way around the high side of that berm, trying to stay away from any of the ruts. He's going to put the Honda stopwatch on and see what the lap times are. Probably pretty slow. I'll bet they are with this tough, tough track involved. A good 5.2 second lead on the second place rider as the white flag is out. This is the final lap of our 125 main. Can the young Frenchman win his first American Supercross? Number 24 having his problems is Robbie Rader, and behind him is Kevin Windham. This is a 20 lap final. Kevin Windham may have a shot at top three. Ah, the race charge. for the checkers is on, and he's uh, got to hold it all together now. It's composure time for the young Frenchman. Wyndham in seventh, unofficially, as I count it back. Really a survival of the, the strongest, the smartest, the guy that makes the fewest mistakes. You see Billiman right here just not even trying to go for any of the doubles, just play it smart. Isn't it wild that Ramsey, who took the whole shot now in front, Raynard, who has done such a quick job this year, and Wyndham are all behind this young man. The checkers for David Villeman. Oh, he's going to be a happy young man. And coming across in second place, his best finish of the year is Casey Johnson with the Pro Circuit Kawasaki. Villeman, number 125, is feeling the hurt after that victory. Well, the 125 celebration will be a great one. I wonder if it's French Champagne. <laughs> and Kevin Windham is now two out of four on the 125 season. The big guys 250 CC main event is coming up next. We'll also hear from our winner who speaks fairly good English. Good luck, Davy Coombs, when we come back. The bike you dream about means serious cash. He was leading the 125 main event here in the Kingdom in Seattle and led a parade of 125 riders that hit the dirt here this evening. Ron Cotta was already in the air, as David Bailey explained. He could not go anywhere, and new leaders came around. Let's go down to Davy Coombs now with our very happy winner. Okay, thanks. I'm down here with David Bielman. David, this is a great way to go back to France with a win here. Yeah, I leave uh, for France uh, on Tuesday. I'm very happy to, to finish my trip in America by, by a, a victory. I'm very happy for FMF uh, because I have a, a lot of support from FMF. All my friends, no mechanic, no problems. And I'm very happy today. Were you surprised about the way all the other Americans were falling out there? There were guys falling everywhere. It was crashes. Yeah, uh, there was a battle uh, between Casey Johnson, Craig Decker, Pedro Gonzalez. Yeah, a very good uh, battle, and we saw uh, the two first fell, but uh, I think it's a race, and uh, I'm very happy to win here. Okay, congratulations on your win. Now we're going to turn around and talk to Casey Johnson. This is our runner-up. Casey, uh, same thing? It was a demolition derby out there. Yeah, there was a lot of riders going everywhere, and uh, it was kind of hard to keep track who was who, you know? Like, people were falling down, and, you know, if you tried to go to the outside, they went to the inside, and they cut you off. And, it was a good race. We really had a good race going, and uh, I'm real happy for David. He's getting ready to go overseas, and uh, hopefully he can do pretty good back there. All right, well, congratulations on second, Casey. Thanks a lot. I'd like to thank my mechanic, Dave Feeney, for uh, keeping that bike running really good, and uh, all my other sponsors, uh, Split Fire Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, uh, Renthal, 
uh, braking, uh, bell helmets, Scott goggles. Thanks a lot, to Bevo. Getting my goggles going, and uh, all you fans for coming out. Thanks a lot. Back up to you, Art. A good friendship between those riders, uh, obviously, as we take a look at uh, the sad side of Kevin Windham's performance. Going off the track there, picking up the bike and getting back into the action. Casey Johnson, and look at that, he just had to go down again because getting back on the track, a slower rider came bouncing into him. Look at this. Villeman, Johnson, Gonzalez, his first podium of the year. Robbie Raynard coming back from a very, very slow start for fourth. An excellent job by Robbie Raynard and the $500 check going to the hole shooter, Pedro Gonzalez, the 1-900 Pro Race Hole Shot Award. And he certainly can use that as a privateer, also supported by Kawasaki of Mexico. The point standings, and I just uh, scribbled it down as quick as I could. I've got Wyndham and Raynard tied for first place in points with Villeman moving up to third and Casey Johnson to fourth. Okay, the celebration for 125s continue, and we will be back with the big guys, the 250s. Jeremy McGrath, can he get his first win of the season? Can Steve Lampson make a challenge for the first time this year against those powerful Yamahas? And the good job that Ezra Lusk and Doug Henry did in the qualifying heats. In the world of exercise, nothing is more basic than dumbbells. Nothing is more versatile or more effective. Lee awaiting the 250 main event. And we've seen so much uh, good qualifying action up to this point and an outstanding, very rugged 125 main event. Most anything I think can happen during this 250 round. But as uh, Davey Coombs down on the floor of the stadium brought out, the last time that Lusk and Henry won their qualifying heats in the same uh, evening, they went 1-2 in the main event. What do you think, Davey? Well, I think they could do it again. They're definitely the fastest riders in their heat races. They both had to work their way into that position but Doug Henry's heat race was 15 seconds faster than Lusk. Now, I, lo I know Lusk eased up at the end, but 15 seconds, I don't know, that's almost two seconds a lap. So. Art Ekman and David Bailey, let's go down to Davey Combs and see what they've been doing with the track now as they prepare for this 250 May. Thanks. As I told you a little bit earlier, there's a lot of dirt here that's really wet. They brought it in. It was, you know, had bad winter and all that stuff like that. But they're really working really hard to change all the jumps, all the ruts and everything like that. That's why that 125 race we just saw was like a demolition derby. I've never seen that many wrecks in one race. And I think that we might have the same thing in the 250 race. They're doing the best job they can to get everything fixed up. But, you know, the track breaks down quick on a day like this. David, what's your impression of Jeremy McGrath right now going into this main event? Well, I think that right now, Jeremy really needs this win. I know he's got a lot of confidence. He acts like, you know, no problem. I've got a, a three and a two the last couple weeks. But he really needs to win because he's a winner. He's improved his results each of the first three weeks. The only way he can prove tonight is to get a win. I think this is going to be really important going into the, the next part of the series. Jeremy McGrath, I hope he doesn't get too close to Wyatt Seals, who's got the flu, his mechanic. And there, Mike Gossler is uh, giving last-second uh, instructions and uh, conversing with his rider, Steve Lamb. David Bailey, you've got several other riders here that looked very good in the qualifying, and I think Larry Ward is at home here, don't you? Larry Ward is definitely at home here, winning here before. He knows what it feels like. The crowd's definitely behind him. Last year, he got the whole shot and just took off. Only problem then, he just didn't have the fitness from his injury to go the distance. This time, I think he's healthy. He's got the confidence. They're number eight, stretching his arms up. Greg I think Robertson. Albertine's got a great shot at tonight. Yeah, I think he does, too. I talked with him earlier this week and and uh, told him I thought he looked a lot better, and he said he's a lot more confident. He felt like he could have caught Emig in, the, in Phoenix. That's why he was pushing it and ended up going off the racetrack. And uh, he's pretty happy to have two bad races, really, and still be where he is in the points. Uh, and Emig, he could come out and surprise everyone. After he won in Phoenix, he was like, you know, that's the first time I ever won in January, I think. And he's got the, the confidence now, I think, and, and he realizes that you just have to keep you're cool and on this racetrack if he can keep his cool he may come out on top uh, the Phoenix win was a good win for me it was good for the team and everything like um, it was the earliest that I had ever won a race basically I don't, I don't think I've ever won in January um maybe one time I won an ultra cross but outside of that I don't think I've ever won a race in January I know people expect too much of you then maybe if you win too early you know? yeah yeah they start expecting you to win every week and 
You know, that's so depression. I'm not sure I can take it. We got seven riders in the field tonight who have won here at the Seattle uh, race, and uh, that makes it even more exciting, I think. Uh, Bradshaw's a winner, and number 100, Mike Kudrowski looked pretty good in the, in the uh, qualifying round. Yeah, he did, and coming from pretty far back in the pack on the start, worked his way into fourth. It's the first time he's gotten out of the heat race that close to the leaders, that had to give him some confidence, and knowing that his, one of his teammates is second in the series he's got to know that his motorcycle is certainly capable of making it up there to the podium that's going to give him a great uh, boost of confidence mike kudrowski number 100 starting the bike up as we get set for the 250 main yeah. you see john dowd in the middle of those guys number 14 without his goggles morocco just to the inside of him lampson way down there number four I think the first corner is going to be a real crucial element here tonight because there's not very much room in there. All these guys get pushed wide. You see out there right up to number 47, pretty close to the hay bale. Somebody's going to get pushed out there. We'll be right back to the Kingdom of Seattle, Washington with more exciting Supercross action. Warmed up. Remember how cold it is outside. And it's new this year. They've got a huge dome over there for the pit area. These guys are able to stay out of that cold weather, but... Still, you walk through into the stadium, and it's so important to be fired up and ready. So we've already had a crash on the parade lap. And let's go to David Coombs now. Okay, sorry about that. Now, De Ezra Lusk and Doug Henry had the first two picks on starting gate. You guys might want to watch us from upstairs. Ezra chose the second gate from the inside. Doug's out there in the middle. Doug stands more chance of a pile up, and Ezra might get shut down if he comes up on the inside. We saw it happen to Renard in the 125 class. Something, uh, yeah, it's definitely a good point. I just think somebody's going to get pushed wide. You can see Wyatt going to work to try to straighten out Jeremy's bike. He may have bent something a little bit. And Doug Henry and Lusk were the last ones to finish their parade lap. I used to like to always do that. Because then you don't have to sit at the starting line so long and think about things. Wyatt Seals getting the assistance from the team manager, Roger DeCoster, who comes over there. And there's the points leader, Doug Henry. And, of course, it's been such a wild season with three different winners in three races. There you see Henry going through some uh, calisthenics to get that flow going. He, so important. Stay warm up. He has, he used to have trouble with arm pump until he started doing exercises right before going out to the main. He's one of the fittest guys. I talked with his mechanic, Pete Steinbrecher. He, he feels like his rider, Doug, is in the best shape of anybody out here. And I know that Doug likes to have that confidence sitting on the starting line. Steve Lampson looking for his first victory. If we're going to see four brands and four different riders win the first four races, he's got to win tonight. It's either got to be him or Larry Ward, and they both have a legitimate shot. That's right. 32nd board is up. When it goes sideways, the gate will drop anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds. It's get anxious time. You see Jeremy uh, uh, Emig right there. There's Jeremy McGrath alongside of Albertine. Number 17 is Damon Huffman right next to Jeremy McGrath. Let's take a look and see who gets out of the shoot first. Oh, the crowd's gone. They're, they're really enjoying it. It could go at any time now. The 250 main from the Seattle Kingdom is underway. Lamps in a good start, number four. Does he pick up the $1,000? It's close. Michael Craig, number 15. Jeremy McGrath is right there. Oh, a great start. Ezra Lusk is right behind Jeremy McGrath, number 11. In first place, it's Mike Craig. Jeremy McGrath in second. Steve Lampson in good position, third. Then it's Ezra Lusk trying to make a move on Lampson. Larry Ward right in there with these guys. He's got to look at the lead. Rough and tumble this is going to be. Jeremy McGrath trying to hold on a second. Here comes Ezra Lusk. He makes the pass on Jeremy McGrath. So does Larry Ward. So all of a sudden, Jeremy is back to fourth. Unless he comes through in the whoop section. Our leader is Michael Craig. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of lead changes here. Other than Mike Craig sneaking in there and grabbing that hole shot like he did in the heat race. All the favorites we highlighted are out front. This is going to be a 
a great race. Michael Craig hasn't had the best start on his season after a good season in Europe. A six and an eight. And here's the battle between Ward and Jeremy McGrath. Larry Ward, number six, Honda of Troy. And number one with the knack knack racing machine, Jeremy McGrath. McGrath. So McGrath is now in point. And he almost got a sandwich right there. He touched the back tire of Larry Ward and then the rear tire of him was getting rubbed off by Steve Lampson. Did a good job to keep it upright. Lampson and McGrath got into it, of course, in round number one in the opener at Los Angeles. We see right there the difference in timing. Oh, this is very close. Craig does not have that much of a lead on Ezra Lusk as they go through the whoops. I still believe it's going to be the guy that makes the least mistakes and keeps his cool. Emig's right in there. So is Albertine. Everyone's gotten great starts. Craig, Lusk, Ward, McGrath, Lampson, and Doug Henry. Here comes Lusk. The young rider from Bainbridge, Georgia. Block pass. That's for Lusk, number 11. And back and forth we go, bar to bar. Over the throw, Thor triple. Oh, good acceleration on the outside. And now here's Lusk on the inside. Craig cuts back to the inside. If he can do the triple, Lusk looks over at him, shuts the door. These guys are starting to pull away just a little bit from McGrath and Lampser, but Larry Ward now. Larry Ward and McGrath swapping positions the last couple of laps. Still in the hunt. And with the rough track, almost anything can happen here tonight. Ezra Lusk and Michael Craig, one, two. There's Stephen Butler, the mechanic for Ezra Lusk. Wyatt Seals putting the board out for Jeremy McGrath as McGrath's in third. He's being pressed by Larry Ward, and Doug Henry is very close to Larry Ward. Ezra Lusk, our leader. Lusk looking awesome. He's starting to pull away a little bit now. So can Ezra Lusk, who took a second place in Los Angeles and who ended last year with a good second place in Denver, can he hold on? We'll find out when we get back. Welcome back to 250 Main Action, round number four of AMA Supercross here in 1997. Larry Ward with the leap over Jeremy McGrath on the inside. So Larry Ward moves closer to his Honda of, of Troy teammate Michael Craig. As we're lost, leaping through that whoop section. It's the best I've seen anybody do it all night. They fixed it just a little bit for the main, the best they could. He's starting to pull away, and if he can do that, he'll be able to take the wide lines and maintain his momentum through the corners, not have to worry about somebody breathing down his neck, have to protect his line, and because all these guys are having to do just that, Lust could be gone. Ezra Lust with a three-second lead on Michael Craig, then Larry Ward, then Jeremy McGrath, and here comes Doug Henry approaching the rear end of uh, Jeremy McGrath. Oh, he's right on his roost. Henry with that inside line. Let's see what happens here. Different timing. Look at Henry. Triples all the way over this. No one else has done that tonight. Jeremy McGrath just able to block him out there, but what's going to happen to the whoops? Here comes Henry. Henry passes McGrath. And so McGrath slips back to fifth spot. Ezra Lusk out in front. Michael Craig, Larry Ward, Henry McGrath, and Lampson in that order. Number three, Emig is next, if you want to go back that far. Doug Henry had a chance to get in there and get into Larry Ward, but it's too early in the race to start any of that. Larry Ward, you can't push him around, not in his hometown, not where he's won here before. Ride with a lot of confidence. Doug Henry told us before, and we mentioned it, he's living a dream right now, the leading points leader on the 1997 season. Different timing. Here goes Henry again over that triple. He likes the inside and gets the great torque for the triple. Now watch Henry through the whoops. A little different timing. Made a mistake that time. He wasn't able to get that timing that helped him make that pass on McGrath the lap before. Doug Henry won his first heat race here in Seattle in 1994. You might remember that, David. He passed his teammate Jeremy McGrath. Here comes the reward. Gonna get in front of Michael Craig. Moving into second. Brings the Seattle crowd alive. As we mentioned, Larry Ward's lone Supercross victory is right here in Seattle. Henry moves in front of Craig for third. So Henry is on the move. His pass of his teammate at the time, Jeremy McGrath, in the heat race, shocked the Honda crew. All right now, he's shocking Jeremy again. He came around him. Jeremy's still in the hunt, though. He's staying close. Like I said, you're going to have to play your cool. Lusk is down. Lusk went down. 
crowd erupts. Roy Ward has taken over the lead, but hot on his trail is Doug Henry. Doug Henry is only a second behind. Here, let's take another look at Ezra. Ezra starts in, gets crossfitted right there. State's sitting down in the seats. We could get that preload and hop those bumps. Got crossfitted, didn't hop anything. A tough break for Ezra Lasko, who is back up and running in fifth place. He's not far away. The battle's out in front. Here comes Doug Henry on the bumper of Larry Ward. Larry Ward trying to hold off. He's gotten stronger as this season's gone on. Started the season week just running for points. Surprised even himself in getting a third, a fifth, and a fourth. Henry to the inside. Here's the key play. Nope, he didn't get the torque to go the triple. Henry, you see, he jumps that triple, he pulls right up long side. That enables him, if he gets to the whoop section, good to make the pass. Larry Ward's also got a good line through there, though. I think he should be able to hang on to that spot, especially with the inside line in the corner. You saw Marshall Plum hanging out the board for Larry Ward. Let's go down to Coombs, who's with him. All right, thanks, sir. Marshall, it's a demolition derby out there. I said this all night. What are you going to tell Larry? Just keep pointing straight and start worrying about those guys behind him. Um, he's just got to stay relaxed and uh, stay focused on the track, try not to make too many mistakes and um, look ahead. Jeremy McGrath is not giving it in, I'll tell you. He just passed Michael Craig, and he's in third position right now. Larry Ward with a second and a half lead on Henry. And Lusk is still there. He Lusk. dropped the spot to Mike Craig trying to fix his clutch lever. But now he looks like he's regained his form, and he's putting the pressure on these guys. And right behind him, Lamson. With all that congestion, there's not much... Hopping on the triple as they come into the whoops. Jeremy McGrath with Michael Craig and Ezra Lusk, number 11. That's Lampson, number four. And number three is Jeff Emmy. What a race. Lusk has regrouped and moved back into fourth. He's looking at the back of McGrath. These guys have both got a good look at the leaders. They're not that far ahead. So a new summer. It's Ward, Henry, McGrath, Lusk, Lampson, and Craig. Henry inching up on Larry Ward. The crowd here in Seattle, Larry Ward's native state of Washington, is holding their breath. Larry's holding his too, I bet. His mechanics been telling him to breathe. Doug Henry's mechanics been telling him to breathe. Watch the difference of lines right here. Well, we talked earlier with Larry Ward. He certainly had some confidence. Here comes Henry. Ward got the position, though. But Henry is just sizing him up. We mentioned earlier, David, this track is pretty easy to pass on. Pete Steinbreaker. Henry's mechanic and Davey Combs, I think you've moved over to him now. Is your rider in better shape than Larry Ward? I have a good feeling he is. He's been working real hard at the beginning of the season, and Larry had some, uh, I think, some physical problems. So we're going to see at this end of this race. All right, thanks, Pete. Back up to you, Art. Could Doug Henry become the first two-time winner on the season? Definitely a possibility, but I don't want to take anything away from Larry Ward. Riding great. He's got a good enough line here. You see, he triples that. He's on the inside. So even though Doug triples it over there on the outside and closes the gap, Larry Ward still controls the corner and the best lines with the woo. Ruts might play a big part. You see how deep that rut in the corner was. You can flow. You can do it. Marshall Plum is mechanic uh, this year. Larry's no stranger to leading races. He led here last year. We already talked about that. Didn't have the fitness. Pete Steinbrecher still thinks that his rider's fitter, but I don't think it's going to come down to fitness. I think... Oh, almost got the block pass with the lapper in the way. They were trying to get around number 47. And that was Ryan Huffman who made it with the last chance qualifier. It's going to come down to sheer determination and will. He's got the most resolve, and behind these guys, McGrath is dangerously close. Ward took a third place here in 1995. Ended up eighth in 96 after leading the first 10 laps. Larry Ward by the bar. Doug Henry. A lot of Doug Henry fans here. Very knowledgeable fans of the Pacific Northwest, knowing how far Doug Henry has come back to lead this race, not just in the race, but in life. You can see as Larry Ward went through the mechanics area just after he got passed, looked like he just took a great big deep breath, like, okay, get it together. He made a couple of mistakes, but you still got a good lead over McGrath. He's still right there with Henry. Anything can happen at the end of this race. Eight laps to go. That's McGrath in third. Eight laps 
to go is an entire heat race. And Emig has moved into fourth. Lampson in fifth. And LaRocco now in sixth. This is that good line that Henry has over the triple jump. It's not even a triple jump. He just turned it into one. It's worked for him. And what's, why it's working is because his timing, the jumps that he's having to gas it to lift off from have no ruts because everyone else is jumping over those jumps. So he can guarantee himself should be able to jump that every lap. Craig it cannot breathe and is having trouble with his breathing anyway. He's uh, ridden off the track as we take a look at the leader. It's Henry, Larry Warry, Jeremy McGrath, Jeff Emick, and Steve Lampson. Lampson is starting to put the pressure on Emick now. Oh, that's a good duel. Lampson feeling the heat. He puts the heat on himself to move up that ladder for Team Honda, the Lone Ranger. It's a great track. You can see all the different choices of lines. Everyone's got a different idea of the fastest way through sections because of the ruts. Getting everyone fits. Lampson right there coming up short. Looks Whoa. like he hurt himself. And here comes LaRocco moving up a spot. LaRocco into fifth. That really took the wind out of Lampson's sails. He was may have hurt his wrist there. His bike might have seized. Ryan Hughes, we're getting a report now from Davey. Ryan Hughes' bike is possibly seized up. Oh, bad break for Ryan, who's had a tough start after the third in Phoenix. He was hoping to really move it. And number 12, he's coming off the track. Phil Lawrence, who's got that very bad uh, torn tendon in his thumb. Lawrence talking things over with Dean Gibson, his mechanic on the sideline. He's so far out of the points right now, it's not that devastating. Button is down. Jimmy Button, riding injured for the Team Chaparral, is down number 18. So, as we saw in the 125s, it's happening again in the 250s. This track is brutal, and I think the fittest and the smartest, the guy that plays his cool with the most patience, going to prevail. Larry Ward is riding an outstanding race. Let's take a look at the Honda stopwatch now as Doug Henry tries to pull away. Should be a pretty good time. Here's Larry Ward in second. Jeremy McGrath in third. Some 8.4 seconds in back. And Jeff Emig on the move. Here comes Mike LaRocco. He could finish. Oh, Mike LaRocco having all kinds of problems. Did he go down? He went out of a shot. No, he's still up. There's Ezra Lust, 22.9. Mike Kudrowski coming through, Lampson fading further back now. There's Greg Albertine just coming through. Bad start for Greg. Number 16 is Kyle Lewis before he goes to Japan. As we take a look at this Honda stopwatch to see what the lap time for number 20, Doug Henry, might be. You mentioned earlier, David Bailey, Doug Henry had a phenomenal lap time and, and race time in the qualifying heat. Well, it was approximately two seconds a lap faster than Lux. I know Henry pushed a little harder through the whole race. Look at his timing. Oh, 54.3. It's pretty quick. A lot, lot slower than it was in practice, but at this point, he's starting to open up the lead over Larry Ward, and I'm sure that's good enough for him. Henry Ward and McGrath. And it looks like McGrath is starting to pull up on Larry Ward for second place. Four laps remaining. It seems like an eternity. It's an eternity for these guys, especially for Larry Ward. Henry looks like he's got control of things out front, but Larry Ward's now starting to feel the heat from McGrath. It's going to be a tough last. Jeremy McGrath setting his sights on his first Supercross win. He got his first win in the heat uh, in the 125s here in Seattle. Look at it, back and forth, Larry Ward. And McGrath, McGrath inches ahead of Larry Ward. I think Larry Ward right now, Art, is playing it smart. He's seeing all these guys crash. Every time he comes around, there's another guy down. And he doesn't feel like he has the speed to, to challenge McGrath. Why fight it? Why chance going down and getting 11th or finish? And he's second in points. He's it's second. a wild season. Yeah, he's got a great position in the point standings. And Jeremy McGrath led all the way, but two laps here in uh, 94, and he had a flat tire. And it took him out of the contention there. Let's go down to Davey with Lance Seals. Okay, thanks, Art. Thanks, David. What? Do you have enough time to get him? You got three laps to go. Jeremy just moved in the second. Uh, I don't know. Doug's riding a good race. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's riding the ruts really well. So two laps pretty much is all we've got left. But uh, if he makes a mistake, yeah. All right. Well, I hope you feel better. <laughs> thanks, man. Jeremy McGrath is not only past Larry Ward, he's picking up space on Doug Henry, our leader. That la look at the difference right there. Henry Number 20. The 
Larry Ward still very close. Any one of these guys could go down, and Larry will get it back. But Jeremy jumped the triple that lap on the far side of the racetrack. Kudrowski fans, he's moved into sixth. But the real highlight is number one. Can Jeremy McGrath, with only two laps remaining, catch Doug Henry? Henry couldn't do the triple that last lap around. Not this one. He's over this one clean. He's heading up to the triple where he couldn't make it before. These guys are already lapping Bradshaw. Two and a half second lead. Doug Henry over number one. Henry goes for the triple. So does Jeremy. This is where he made up all that time the lap before. All right. It's all out now. It's a fight. Jeremy can smell it. So can Doug. Let's Doug's looking if, for win number two and a bigger points lead. Let's see if Jeremy can pick up some time here in the uh, whoop section. He hops the first three. Has problems. Bobbles in the whoops. Doug Henry a great advantage now as the white flag comes out for Doug Henry. Relax and flow. Needed to show him that just before he went to that whoop section. That could be very costly. That might have cost him. If Henry was to make a major bobble in this final lap, that mistake right there by Jeremy could have cost him the win. It is Doug Henry, Jeremy McGrath, Larry Ward, and right now Emig is starting to pressure Ward number six right here. Emig looking for a podium spot after Larry, winning in Phoenix. Larry Ward came up real short on that triple. That takes so much out of you at this point in the race. These guys are exhausted right now. Jeremy is still only three and a half seconds in back, but we're on the final lap. Almost an impossibility unless Henry should uh, bobble. Smart for Larry Ward. Oh, and it lands on Larry Ward. Ward doesn't want to give it up. That was smart for Ward. He took the inside in the corner. And Emig, Emig had trouble in the whoops. The checkered flag for Doug Henry. He becomes the first two-time winner of the 1997 season. Well, the talk in the pits prior to race time was Doug Henry. And he certainly didn't let his fans and supporters down. Oh, it's going to be fun listening to him on the podium as well as the others describe what was once called a destruction derby during this 250 main event. We'll be right back in just a moment. Two has been brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has the ride you've been waiting for and the financing to get it. And by Honda, the winners of the last nine straight 250 Supercross championships. Honda, come ride with us. Welcome back to an exhausted kingdom. The fans were treated to some great bang-bang racing as we see here. Doug Henry making a pass on Larry Ward. Look at that, right around the outside. And he leaped into the whoop section just to make sure he could get out in front of Larry Ward and control that line through the whoop section, pull away from there. And although Jeremy got close at the end, Doug jumped all the triples, didn't make the mistakes to allow Jeremy with any kind of a chance to take him out in the corner at the end. So the two uh, riders uh, that you said uh, were most mentioned in the pits, finishing one and two, Doug Henry and Jeremy McGrath. Let's go down on the floor of the stadium, and uh, I'm anxious to hear their comments. I hope you are. Davey Combs, take it away. Okay, thanks. Uh, second time this year, Doug Henry, you surprised me again. You surprised everybody. Congratulations. <laughs> thanks a lot, Davey. You know, after last week in Phoenix, I got a sixth place, and uh, after that race, you know, I just, that whole week, I just didn't really feel too comfortable. And uh, after that weekend, I just focused. I said, man, I'm gonna, win. I'm gonna go win Seattle. I told my wife I was gonna win it. And I came out here and did it, and she's gonna be so happy. All right, you're having just an amazing year. You surprised everybody. But the one thing is you're showing no kinks in your armor. You're doing it on all the tracks. You come up here in Seattle. What's it gonna take to stop you? Well, I don't know. It's really too early in the year to say. Uh, if I get this thing keep going, then you could ask me that question. But right now, it's uh, I still got to focus on winning. Okay, you gonna give Stacy a call? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, now I just last week I didn't get to thank all uh, my sponsors and stuff. I, you know, Yamaha has been doing such a great job, and um, you know we just picked up Bridgestone tires this year, and they've been working great. And my, Showy and Fox and just Scott, everybody's just uh, helped me out, and they stuck with me through the years, and. I really appreciate it. I want to thank them. And one guy, or a couple guys I really want to thank a lot is uh, Pete Steinbrecher for sticking with me through all this and uh, my uh, new trainer, Jim Delzer. All right, congratulations, Doug. 
Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, now I'm here with the second place guy. This is Jeremy McGrath. Jeremy, it gets better every week. I saw you struggling a little bit there in the middle of the race, but then you really picked up the end. You almost caught Henry. <laughs> Whoa. Um, uh, yeah, the bike was really excellent out there. It took me a few laps to get going, and I mean, the bike came out the, great good, the, the gate good, and I was riding really good. I was just riding maybe a little bit too cautious out there. They were hanging it out a little more than me in the beginning, and got going towards the end, but we're figuring it out. Okay, I saw you were having some trouble in the one section over there where Henry Passion, toward the end you started to pick it up. Is that not being familiar with the bike, or is that just how tough the Seattle track is? Well, the Seattle track's really tough because it's really soft dirt out there, and there's a million lines you could take, and you know, it's just when you land off jumps, you gotta go right back into another run. It's, it's really tough out there. All right, well, congratulations on second, Jeremy. Thanks a lot. I'd like to thank all you fans for coming out. I'd like to thank Suzuki, Suzuki of Troy, Fox, Spy, Bell Helmets, 1-800-COLLECT, Alpine Star, Saddle Max, and uh, my parents and all my fans. Thanks. Yeah, and your buddies at the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thanks, you guys, for coming out. I'm gonna go check your guys' style tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, and finally, our third place rider, this is basically the hometown guy, Larry Ward. Larry, congratulations. Ah, oh, thanks. You know, uh, it was a pretty good night. Uh, pumped up a little bit in the main. I just got a little nervous, and I got a little tired. Um, but we're getting it figured out. That new bike's working really good. The Honda Troy guys are uh, doing a great job. And, uh, you know, coming back from the broken leg, this is the second time on the podium, I think uh, things are going to go real good the rest of the season. But you're like Doug Henry. There's nothing but surprises so far this year. We know you're hurt early, but you've been riding really well the whole time. Yeah, like I said, that uh, CRT 50 Honda Troy bike is working really good. It's getting me pretty good starts. And, uh, you know, like I said, I can only get better. can't get any worse. So third's good. Go to Indy in two weeks and uh, try to come away with the win. All right, glad to have you up here, Larry. Thank you, and thanks again to, uh, you know, all my fans that come out here and cheer for us. It's the biggest crowd we've ever had, and we really appreciate it. And I'd also like to say hello to my grandma. She came out again this year, and uh, I really like having her here. I guess one of the big stories is Doug Henry's calling his wife right now with the cell phone to tell her exactly what went on. Stacy and of course uh, his newborn I'm sure a little bit young right now to understand the significance and the happiness but uh, but uh, what a great family that is and a, a wonderful young man. Number 20 Doug Henry victorious here for the second time this year of course holding on to the points lead as we uh, take a look at the point structure second place still uh, Larry Ward uh, with his third place finish here tonight and Jeremy McGrath making really the big jump uh, into third place with his second place finishes. Doug Henry holds the trophy high. McGrath having to work very hard after forming his new team, Knack Knack Racing, and uh, switching bikes, of course, putting everything together late. I still think it's a very credible performance by Jeremy McGrath on that new machine. And the engineers have been hovering over that new machine from Japan all week long. They're getting good support from the factory, and uh, I think that'll mean that uh, good things for Jeremy McGrath's future. Yeah, good things for Jeremy and good things for the rest of the guys on the Suzuki team. I know that the results they've been getting and the opportunity with Jeremy moving to that team and perhaps raising the level the rest of those riders a notch, uh, certainly getting uh, Roger the credibility I think he deserves. And he's been telling them, hey, we need this stuff. And now with these results, they're going, okay, whatever you need. And uh, certainly Suzuki looks like they have a chance to win a title. And it looks course, like it's uh, going to come down to the wire, perhaps between Doug Henry and Jeremy, former Honda teammates. Oh, that would be, be a great matchup all season long. Of course, the big disappointments here today as Relusk uh, crashing uh, after being so competitive and uh, that of uh, Steve Lampson, who once again is not in the top ten. Let's get down to Davey Coombs. All right, thanks, you guys. I was down here. I was watching Doug Henry. Took time to step off the podium. He picked up his cell phone. He called his wife, Stacy at home. That guy is a really, really consummate winner. He's a gentleman through and through. And uh, I'm really happy about what he's doing. I know everyone's uh, really surprised about Jeremy. They're maybe blaming on the change of the bikes and everything like that. But you got to give Doug Henry credit. The guy is riding his butt off. That's for sure, Davey. I, I think Doug is uh, is fired up, and once he gets fired up and healthy, a little confidence. I don't think there's any stopping, and we saw that tonight, having to really ride hard to work his way into the lead, and never made a mistake. Okay, next we head to Indianapolis on the 15th of February, and then it's on to Atlanta and Daytona before back to the always packed Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Then we're off to Houston, Orlando, St. Louis. Oh, don't forget that St. Louis race of last year with, with Emmy breaking the string of Jeremy McGrath. Those fans are going to be packing that place. Pontiac. And uh, where are we going to? Oh, we go to Charlotte, don't we? That's a nice little stadium in Charlotte. Then on to Dallas and rounding things out in Las Vegas. 
This is uh, becoming one of the most competitive seasons we've seen in recent years. You know, taking another look at Jeremy, I know that all the focus of this change and uh, the results have been close enough to the lead to win this series. Believe well, it's happened against him, like in the 250 Nationals when Emig hung so close, and then uh, McGrath.